Philly took their second of three against Indiana, and I'm going to tell you why their first place bully ball offense is so deadly. You know who I am, bro. Let's talk about it. On the game's opening possession, every sixer moves into place as one. That's what role definition is. The players on the floor understand what they got to do to optimize the offense, which predominantly runs through Joe. And speaking of which, you don't want to let The Undertaker establish that positioning that early. Philly's attack is no secret. They rely on their size and talent to overmatch teams. They're trying to get at you and bully you one-on-one. -on -one. Our guy's bigger, better, or stronger than anyone you got checking him. He's a baby. The difference in spacing and shooting gravity between this season and last is night and day. For example, how Simmons supposed to capitalize on this mismatch when the players he shares the floor with don't even have the gravity or defensive respect to prevent doubles or triples. Like if two extra defenders that really shouldn't even be defending you smother your shot around the rim, you're bound to throw some crazy shit up at the backboard. This season though, one move Simmons is downhill. He uses a quick hesitation to look Sabonis off and there's enough shooting gravity to pull every pacer out of the paint. This year, the Sixers offense is built upon attacking favorable one-on-one -on -one mismatches like these. There are no guards that can physically match up with Simmons. The Sixers want to give him enough space to make Malcolm Brogdon just another victim. You can see the shooting gravity spreading out Indiana's defense and weakening their interior. Ben initiates contact, we're right in Turner's chest, and finishes with the left. Curry's telling Simmons, get in the dunker. They're going to send a double at Joe. Meanwhile, Green's telling Joe, bro, Go to the basket, go get a bucket, look who's checking you. If you don't grill him. Embiid has four teammates spreading the floor out around the perimeter. So even though the interior looks crowded, there are no Indiana bodies in the paint. The Miles Turner abuse in space didn't stop there. It actually just kept getting worse for him. Shake, Ben, and Joe initiate a game of threes at the top of the key, and the Sixers have shooters deployed in both corners. Indiana switches on the Embiid screen, and Philly generates a Shake, Milton, Miles Turner mismatch they love. Shake uses his handles to create space. That's not my defensive player of the year. No, 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 Miles Turner. Run that back. Do you want to dance? Whoa. Give me your ankle. Ben gets downhill and draws a Pacers double team. Miles Turner completely abandons Joe. When MB gets the rock, Indiana's got to rotate, which forces Turner to leave the basket and get out on a shooter. Turner tells his teammates to step up, but both make respectable business decisions. It'd be body bags otherwise. Man to man everywhere let the undertaker get busy that hezzy pull-up just isn't normal for somebody that size ben makes an entry pass to joe and then goes right to the dunker which pulls away a potential double team then joe gets the money look three sixers around the perimeter and one in the dunker he's got eyes on the help defense and sees the entire floor that's how you break a game of fives down into a favorable one-on-one -on -one matchup Embiid hits turner with the jab jumper, and he's converting over 50% of his mid-range chase. That's unguardable. For the Sixers, it's all about making the game as easy as possible for their playmakers. They provide Joe with enough time and space to work in the post, but also reading and reacting to help defense. He sees the double comb. God, this man's a grave digger for real. First of all, Embiid put 15 points on Turner's head in only six matchup minutes. Second, how many bigs do you know that can execute that move to perfection and convert that shot with over 55% accuracy. And the thing about space is that it's not exclusive to only a few players. The entire pack eats with a spaced floor and any of your favorite defenders can get it. But teams can't just keep getting cooked one-on-one -on -one all game, so they do send double teams. And how the Sixers respond to these double teams directly impacts the outcome of the game. When teams send two at Joe Ben or Tobias, the Sixers gotta make them pay. And last night, they did. It's 
as simple as this. Miles Turner is either going out to check Danny Green at the three-point line or going under the basket to play help defense. Because of how dominant Embiid is, Turner moves towards the basket, which creates a numbers advantage in favor of Philly. Danny Green capitalizes on the numbers advantage and the Sixers hit five threes out of double teams in the first half alone. Altogether, they made 10 three-pointers in the first half. In the 13 games where the Sixers made six or more three-pointers in the first half, they're unbeaten. They haven't lost any of those games. That's the epitome of Doc's motto. If you double the Sixers, they're gonna score. If you don't double them, they're still gonna score. Although that can't be true every possession, that's the mentality Doc wants his guys playing with. Because Embiid continues to identify double teams and accurately pass out of them, the Sixers are so much more of a problem. The defense is at such a disadvantage trying to scramble around and recover from the double team. That's why even in a shortened season, Embiid is on pace to set his second highest total of assisted buckets in his career. Billy's system is all number advantages and mismatches. Let me show you how they simplify the game of five. The Sixers break a game of fives down in a handful of ways. It's not just one-on-ones. The two-man game gets him downhill with a speed mismatch in space. He lowers his shoulder and finishes with the left. If it's not Philly's ball handler getting the bucket, it's usually their screener and roller. This is classic two-man game. Shake manipulates Indiana's drop coverage and finds his big. This is a great way to put pressure on defenses in different ways and exploit their coverage. Embiid has one of the highest mid-range field goal percentages in the league. Find your big man and let him go to work. Philly's system is just so diabolical. The Sixers initiate the two-man game which only involves four players. If any player that's not welcome interferes with the two-man game, the Sixers are trained to make them pay. That's another way that Philly naturally produces number advantages in their favor. They do the same with threes and break a game of fives down into a game of three on three. There's different sequences of options with this look, but here the Sixers used it to get shaked downhill and in a space to hit a spot. Here the Sixers initiate a three on three. There's only supposed to be six players involved. And like I said before, if anyone that's not welcome interferes, the Sixers are trained to make them pay. Billy's bench scored as many combined points as Indiana's entire starting five, and they protected or expanded a lead in both halves. If Philly can replicate that off of their bench on a nightly basis, there's no reason why they can't compete with anybody for a chip. In almost 30 minutes of play, Shake Milton gave the Sixers 26 points on 64% shooting. His three ball had noticeably more arc on it and he sank three of five attempts from deep. Ironically, he's hit three three-pointers in three of his past five games since returning from injury. Shake anchored that Sixers second unit and he was out there serving. He was one of two players off of the Sixers bench to score double digit points. The Sixers bench was responsible for 67 points, which was 20 more than Indiana's bench. In fact, Shake and Korkmaz scored just two less points combined than Indiana's entire bench. Look at the fearlessness top to bottom. Mike Scott went three threes and recorded four steals too. Philly turned in another strong defensive performance once again against Indiana, who has their most and second most total of turnovers in a game against Philly. Every time that Ben and Joe play together, the Sixers feature two of the 10 most dominant on-ball defenders in the league. The two of them and the rest of the squad forced Indiana to turn the ball over a season high 19 times. Uncoincidentally, Indiana turned the ball over 18 times against Philly last time they played, which is the second highest total in a game for them this season. Not only that, but two of their five worst three-point shooting performances this season came against Philly. Sabonis had two of his five worst three-point shooting games and highest turnover total games against the Sixers. Whether it be in 2-3 zone or man-to-man, -man, the Sixers just overmatch Indiana with their size and force them into making bad decisions. That doesn't happen by accident. Indiana is bottom eight league-wide for total turnovers. They know how to protect the rock. But Philly has their number, and when they lock in defensively, they're a very hard team to score against. Eastern Conference All-Star Damanis Sabonis could tell you firsthand that's all I got, fam. Shout out to Ma for everyone supporting and rocking with me. I appreciate you. As always, 
I hope to see you in the next breakdown, but if not, leave me a sub, comment down below, like the video, share it with a friend, holler at me on Twitter and stay in touch with me, do whatever you gotta do. But most importantly, stay solid, stay solid, baby.